Well, hello, everyone. Welcome in. I hope everyone has had a great day together uh, or today so far. I am uh, loving that I get to do this class because it's given me an opportunity to go beyond the proof braid materials that are available for your Glowforge and really try out a lot of different materials. There are hundreds of different materials that you can um, print with your Glowforge. So we're just gonna like kind of just hit the tip of the iceberg today and hopefully get you out of maybe a comfort zone of just using the proof grade materials and being comfortable uh, stretching your wings a little bit. Um, I know for myself, like when I first got my Glowforge and it would tell, you know, give me this error message that I'm gonna break the machine if I, if I use it in a certain way and just kind of being comfortable going past that barrier and trying new things has really opened up what you can do with the Glowforge. Now, keep in mind that this class is being recorded. So if you um, wanna go back and play it and, and make sure you have the settings or whatever that I use, um, it, it will be recorded and you can always touch back on it. So I have uh, seven different projects we're gonna talk about today. And if you have questions about the projects after, the, after I show each material, I will pause and make sure that there's no questions or anything like that um, a little bit before moving on to the next project. Um, the first one I thought I would start off with, the first material I would start off with was paper. So you may or may not know your Glowforge Aura um, will cut paper and it will cut as thin as copy paper and as heavy as chipboard um, and even heavier. Uh, but I don't like I don't really necessarily think of heavier things as paper, um, but it will cut all of your scrap of paper, your um, fine papers that you like to use. You can cut that. And I was even really impressed that I could cut my white cardstock in the Glowforge Aura. So typically your Aura, the laser head is not strong enough to do white and clear materials. And I'll show you some samples down the line of that. Um, but so I thought like, well, I'm just gonna try my white cardstock because that's kind of how you learn. And it actually cut the white cardstock, which was really exciting. So this is um, a seven layer 3D um, shadow box. And each of the layers was cut on the Glowforge Aura. I'm just gonna to switch to my overhead camera so you guys can see the detail that went into this design. Is that fuzzy to me or is that okay? Let me just make sure, let me just give it a quick zoom in there guys. All right, so with, the, um, with this first layer, it's obviously a little bit, you know, not so much is cut out. And then each layer, as you work your way down, the layers are cut a little bit more intricately as you go down. And what I really loved uh, about using the Glowforge for paper was I didn't have to scrape little bits of um, leftover cutout from um, a mat or anything like that. It just, it cut it really smooth. Now I did add a little mark so I remember which side is, is the upside. Um, I have just a little sticker I added onto that. But it cut it out so nicely. Since it's a laser cutter, the laser actually never touches the, I mean, the, there's nothing really touching the paper other than your layers, laser. So you don't have to worry about the paper getting dragged by a blade or anything like that. So I, I just really thought that was a fun thing to do. And I wanna show you in, um, so what I would do is I would place all of these together and you could add, once you've, um, done the print on these, you could come back and add, um, you know, three-dimensional dots between the different layers and really expand on what, what the offering is here. And I have this shadow box, and this is just a nine by nine shadow box from Michael's. So I can take my papers and put them into the shadow box here and make that design. Let's just get that in there with my little pokey pieces here. All right, so we'll just pop that right in there. And then I'll put this like this on top. 
And I just want to make sure that I have my tab at the top. I always kind of mess that up. I don't know about you guys, but I always kind of mess that up. Um, so, oh, okay, there we go. And voila. So now you have this three-dimensional box. And again, I would go back in with foam dots and give those um, some pops and stick it together. But I wanted to show you how in Glowforge you can do that. Um, each layer, Shelly, is cut individually. So let me share with you my Glowforge screen here. Or my, my I think this is, yeah, this will be it. So when I go, I can go to create. So you, the Glowforge software is their website. So you go to their website and you would um, go to either create a new design or if you have your own designs within their software, you can just click on one of your designs is, that you've already done and it will bring that design up for you. So you automatically have this screen here. And let me put my, um, we're going to cut out the purple layer. So I'll put the, you can see where the, um, where the camera on the Aura is trained onto your tray there. So I just put on a purple piece into the Aura and that will um, give a quick scan there. And there's my purple design, my purple paper. Now, each of these layers, as you can see on the left, is an individual layer. And I can select which layer I want to cut. I can also move the layers out of the way. So like there's my very back layer. I can just start moving these out of the way until I get to the layer that I'd like to cut. And it is my, this is the layer I want to cut. So I'm going to move these other layers out of the way as well. And that's our top layer. So this is, is that my purple layer? Yes, that's my purple layer right there. So I just have to bring that onto the screen there where the um, aura is. And this is where you see this purple. That's where my, my uh, paper is in the Glowforge. So let me just zoom out there a little bit. So you can see here's all the each individual layer. I've just moved them off to the side so that I could just cut this piece here. Now, um, if we can, um, let's see, can we go to the front facing camera here? And I'll show you what I'm going to do to my paper first. Oh, I can't do that because I'm sharing, can I? Yeah, you just have to stop sharing your screen and then it'll, it should be spotlighted now. Okay. All right. So I have these little weights um, that I put in. There's a grid. You have a grid in here. Right, so I just put my paper down into the tray and I use these weights to hold the paper down so that it doesn't um, it doesn't move on me. And I just put it in the four corners there. My cut is gonna be a nine by nine cut, so I've got plenty of room there for that to cut through. So then I just go ahead and close my door and then I'll sh we can keep it on that, um, on that camera and then I'll just share my screen here again. Um, so when I'm ready to cut, what you do is you go up to the upper, you, first of all, you got to check your settings. So I'm going to say, select this one, and I'm going to select that I'm cutting, and I need to select my material. So for this one, I'll be cutting 80 pound cardstock, and it gives me the proof grade cut. So that's already what Glowforge has determined is the appropriate cut settings for 80 pound paper. If you want to manually change that, you just click on the little arrow there and you can adjust your cut settings right there. I find that for my um, heavier cardstock, like if I'm using basil cardstock or something like that, the 80 pound works great. Then I just click the print icon here and my the head of the Glowforge will move around and calibrate to be able to cut. So that's, Kathy, I am using magnets to, to hold the paper down. I just got these magnets. I cut some little T things um, with my Glowforge and I was looking around for them today. I don't know, oh, I know where I have one. Um, 
So I had these little tea things I was using and I really wasn't like, I thought with papers, they wouldn't really work that well to hold the paper. Now I do have my Glowforge is um, vented out the window. Okay, my flash is, my light is flashing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push that and it will start cutting. So I have my, you can see next to my Glowforge, I'll just move my camera here a second. You can see right there, I have the um, standalone filter, but my Glowforge isn't connected to that because it's connected here out my window. So I have a dryer vent insert for my window and I put the um, Glowforge cord there. And the reason I do that is the filter is, um, it's loud. So when I teach classes, I it's too loud and I have to, I feel like I have to yell over it. So I just vent it out the window when I'm teaching. You can do that, you know, you don't have to use the filter. The filter is great. Um, it does filter out any of the smoke and the smell. But when the filter's working, it kind of, it pulls the air out of the aura. So that's when I find that my paper might shift or something like that. So that's when I would definitely use your magnets and just general magnets won't work. You have to have really strong magnets um, for that to, to really hold your materials down. And you'll see, we use a lot of different magnets for that. So now just as this is cutting, I'll show you on the Glowforge website, on my, my, my page, you can see how much time is left to cut the design. So it's two and a half minutes. Now, Glowforge in its store in its store has a lot of projects. If you have the Glowforge um, subscription, that you can get the images from. But you can come in and add a design to your canvas, so you can upload an image. You can get your images and your cut files from any sources. Like um, Etsy is a good source. I also use this Creative Fabrica website. You do pay a monthly uh, subscription, but I find like if I just were to use two images from this a month, it pays for itself for me. Um, so I, I really, this is where a lot of the images that I'll use today are from Creative Fabrica. A few of the images may be from Glowforge and we'll talk about that as we go along. But um, that's a great source for your images. But if you're, you know, if you're just, if you're making your own images, you can upload them from Inkscape, from Illustrator, anything like that. Um, so Shelly, great question. Is all of your work created on the Glowforge considered your work and can be sold without any copyright issues? So if you are um, making, making material, making, like if you're making your own designs, so through Illustrator or Inkscape or something like that, and they are your own 100% designs, you've uploaded them to your Glowforge and that, you know, you're, you're using your own designs. That is really the only way you don't have to worry about copyright. Um, if you are going on Etsy and purchasing designs, oftentimes you can purchase a copyright license to it. Um, so if you have, for, for example, like if you use um, sublimation and you use uh, sawgrass, they have done all the work for you on the copyright. So if you were using like a sawgrass sublimation, the images on their website are actually commercial ready. So you have a commercial license with those when you use them. Creative Fabrica, I, they have a really good legal description and explanation of using the images on their website. So I would definitely check out if you use Creative Fabrica. Also, um, like I said, if you buy from Etsy, it'll have that information there. And um, like if you use Cricut, they have an angel policy. Okay, so when this is done, if your software will say, hey, give it a second, let all the smoke go away, and then you can open up your Glowforge. So I take off my magnets and I just want to show you how easy it is to remove your design from the uh, from in here. Now I could pull out my tray and 
and just take the design out that way. But it's so simple. I'm just gonna pull that out and then look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That did the cutting all there for me. And then with your little scraps, I just will take these and you know pull those out. And then these little pieces that are left behind, you can just grab your vacuum and <laughs> vacuum those right up. So I've got my vacuum. And I can just vacuum those right up. If you need to, you can just pull out your tray. And get in there and vacuum all the little debris. Okay, so you do want to keep your machine clean, and it will tell you after you've done a lot of cutting. It will say, "Hey, let's keep your machine nice and happy, and give it a good wipe out um, before you move on and do another project." So I may get that message today. We'll see. All right. So any questions about uh, cutting cardstock or anything like that? All right, so let's move on. Oops, let me see, sorry. Okay, Oop. sorry Chanel, <laughs> I was getting all my fingers on there. Okay, so let's move on. Now, another material that I was so surprised about um, how easy it was to cut is cardboard. And I thought to myself, like, why would you wanna cut cardboard? But if you do, if you're a teacher and you do bulletin boards or you do, um, like let's say you have to do some sort of, your kids have to do a diorama or some sort of decoration, the, um, the cardboard was so easy to cut and to paint. So let's just grab some, I have a bin here of some cardstock. Now, uh, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it started so we can watch it go. And then I'll talk a little bit about um, what I found was helpful with this and what wasn't helpful. So I'll take two pieces of um, cardboard and we'll put that into the Glowforge. So if we're gonna go back over here. Now I did put a piece of cardstock in here because it's always good to see kind of where you're gonna be working on. So with those in there, again, I'll use my magnets, whoops, to kind of hold this down. These magnets are so strong. Okay. Put that over in there. So even through the cardboard, the magnets will hold the cardboard in place. That's how strong they are. All right, this is not a quiet, <laughs> a quiet project today. Here we go. All right. Now with those in place, I can go ahead and close my lid and then I'll go back into the Glowforge software again and we'll pull out a new project. So what I like to do is when I finish with my project, I'll name it and save it. So it saves that project for me. And then um, when I'm ready, I just go create. And I'll pick a project. So this was what I cut out of my cardboard. So the cardboard was really, really fun. I think you could do so much with the cardboard if you have kids or anything like that. Like you can really do a lot with the cardboard. And all I have to do is, I think I already have it on my cardboard settings. So I'm gonna, we'll talk about the settings because you have to, I had to create these settings for this material. So it is a custom setting. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that here in a second. Once I have the, uh, my images placed, I'm going to do the auto focus. So I'm gonna set the focus on um, the cardboard and I just select a piece of cardboard. Yes. Joanne is asking, can you use cardboard from boxes? Joanne, these are, you may have noticed the markings on the back of these. These are actually um, cardboard from Amazon. So um, I took my Amazon box I cut where my magnets came in and I cut it up and I put those right in there. And I'll find my, um, before we leave, I'll find my packaging for my magnets so you can, you can know what those are. But yeah, I put that right in there. 
Okay, so now that it's, it's got the measurements, it's un, undefined materials, and I'm gonna hit print, and it will get that going. It'll calibrate it and everything like that. Let's move our screen there. Okay. So while that's doing its work, and then I will, um, I'm gonna be curious to see how long it's gonna take to do it. Um, Sheila, can we come back and I'll put myself back on that overhead camera. So what I did on the, um, on the cardboard, because it is a custom setting. So, and it's great because, you know, cardboard is free, right? When you get your package, your cardboard comes in with it. So I did a couple different settings. This was my first cut and it really didn't cut through. So I did another cut and again, it didn't quite go through. So I knew I kept adding um, a, either pressure, power, or I added passes. So I think I got up to, I kept adding my um, pressure. And as you can see, it was like, it was really almost there. It was almost cut through, but it didn't quite get it. And so I added one more pass. It goes by three passes and it cut, it cut out the design. Now, what I love about the cardboard too, is you can engrave with the cardboard. So you can choose engrave settings. Now, this one, I just kind of threw it in there and I don't know if I get closer. Let's see if I can, you can see. Um, you notice how the dark, the top of this is a bit darker and the bottom of it is lighter. It's the reason you use the magnets. And this is more so I found with wood is your wood can warp so it doesn't lay flat. So this part here may have been higher up closer to the laser than this part right here. So if you find like your, your engraving is off, it's darker on one than the other, check that your material is on the grid and it's pushed down and it's not um, coming off. But the fact that you can engrave on chipboard was so fun to me to, to try that out. Once I um, got my hearts cut out, I just put them, I took it out of the Glowforge with, uh, it's still in the cardboard. And I was just able to take my paintbrush and my acrylic paint and just paint right over it while it was in the cardboard. So I didn't have to worry about getting paint on the side or anything like that. So one use for cardboard is to paint templates. I mean, to cut out a template for something. If you're having to cut and paint, say a hundred hearts for Valentine's day, if you had a little template that you could pop that wood piece in and then just put your, your paint right over it, that would be incredibly easy. All right, so can we go back to the front facing camera and we'll pull these out. Let's hope that I got my settings. I have my updated settings in there and everything cut out. So a lot of times when I'm testing something, I'll just keep the um, the piece in there and I'll just come in and go, did that work? Did it cut through? And I just push on it to see how it cut through. And this did cut all the way through. Look at that. How fun. And this is, um, this is great if you're trying to work um, a prototype for a design to use your cardboard. You can use cereal boxes or anything like that to um, to cut with any kind of cardboard like that and just play with your um okay so if we come back over to this one the overhead she's not going to get her workout tonight um so then i would just take my paint paint right over that and then use um use my my e6000 glue and i glue that right down on there and this is, I mean, it was fast. It was easy. If you need little like things for parties, how fun is that? I love this. So that is cutting with cardboard. All right, so that's our second material for the night. Now the next material, I'm trying to decide which one I should do next. Why don't we talk about foam? Did you know in your Glowforge, oh wait, let me see, make sure there's no questions. Can you change size? What happens if your laser hits the magnets? So 
The great thing about, that's a really great question because I worried about that myself. I was like, oh, what if, what if that like hits and nicks the magnet or something like that? Um, I honestly don't know what would happen if it hits it. I'm guessing it would probably try and cut it. And since it's a, it may etch it or something, like since it's a metal, but really when you put your, um, when you close your lid, I've got it showing because it's going to calibrate and you'll see that there's my magnet right there. I know that my design, I don't want to put my design so close to that little, it's hard to tell, but there's a red line there. And I just don't put it close enough to the magnet where it would hit the magnet. Um, if you needed to get that close to the edge, then I would just put the magnet, you know, like right there and move your design so it's not stuck into the magnet. That's a great question though, because I do I do think about that. I'm like, oh, what if what if that happened? What would I do? Okay, so here is um, this is foam. This is that craft foam in the kids' aisle at Michael's. The back of it is cut with this uh, with the thicker foam. Now this is where this tool comes in really handy. This is called a caliper, and what you do is uh, you just turn it on. And you can set it to inches or centimeters. You open up the jaws, you put your material in there, and it will calibrate your um, width of your material. So this material is 0.23 inches. That is super good because different types of materials are different widths. So this is another piece of foam, and it's the glittery foam. So when I put that in there, that comes up at 0.06. But I also have this foam that has, um, I, I found this at Michael's, this pack of foam has adhesive on the back. And it was great because the first time I made this, this little line, I really struggled getting that onto the design, but I can just take this foam and measure it. And this one measures 0.07. So why does that matter? Why would you need to know the measurements of your materials? Well, your laser head will go as deep as you indicate the material is. So if I put this material in with a 0.06 um, depth and it's actually a 0.07, it may not cut through. So having your little caliper to get that exact measurement is super helpful. This was one of the um, materials, let's see, okay. See how that, you can see like one dark circle and one light circle there. This was one of the white materials I tried to cut. And I, I kind of, I, I know white doesn't really cut on the Glowforge Aura, so I kind of gave up on that. But the, what I was really surprised about was how this foam glitter cut. So why don't I, why don't we look at that? Um, let's see, I will share my screen again. Let's see. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, it's called a caliper and it's an electronic digital caliper. And I really like the electron, the digital part of it because I don't have to go like, well, is it like you have the measurements here, but you don't have to go like, well, is it this, is it that? You know exactly the depth of that tool. I will tell you, my son comes in my craft room. It is always the tool he picks up. He just, oh, he'll, he gravitates towards that tool and uh, he'll, he'll pick it up and want to like, he'll just play with it. Cracks me up every time. Like, would you not touch my stuff? But, you know, I'm glad he's in here. Okay, so this is, so we've got the glitter. Now this again is another design from, um, this design is from Creative Fabrica. And if you are doing a little business, if you have a side hustle going, it is a great idea to start thinking about graduation. I know, you know, you're like, oh my goodness, we just finished Christmas. How can I be thinking about graduation? Graduation is going to be right around the corner. And something like this is an item that you can really take a special order for. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to bring this little guy over here. And I'll avoid what I've already cut and my little magnets. And I will um, 
Let's see, I'm gonna ignore this one. I'm not gonna cut this one. And this one, I can either cut with, um, I have to say I'm cutting, and then I can select the thin foam, and this setting does cut it. I already know that. But if I were to need to make a different cutting, like if I were just doing it for the first time, I would go up here to the unknown materials, you go across here and you set the depth of your um, of your material. So I think this one we said was 0 0.07, 0 0.06 on this one. So I would change the depth of this to 0 0.06. Or you can um, do the set focus where you allow the machine to measure where the focus is. So I have this little red square and I put that, drop that down on, the, on my mat there, and it will calibrate it again based on the depth of how far that material is from my other, um, from the other, uh, from the head, the laser head to the top of the material. Now, I do have that little pink piece of paper in there, which I don't think will make a, which should, shouldn't be a problem, but let's just see. I didn't, I forgot I had that in there. Um, if anything, it may cut through it, who knows? So I'll just take this one and I'm going to go with that thin foam setting and we're going to go ahead and do print. So now it's going to calibrate it um, and get it in position before it starts to cut. Now foam, craft foam might not be something you would think that you would, you would want to cut, um, but it really, it, like, it's so much fun. And the great thing about it, and I, I don't know, I think it's because the foam is a plastic. Okay, so also I just want to show you guys, see right here what tells me how long it'll take to cut. So I know I have, it'll cut in a minute and 15 seconds. So let me stop that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the button, but we'll, we can stay on this camera. Um, because this is a plastic, you it doesn't leave, like you might have a little bit of residue on your hand from it, but it is, it's, it's really very little, which surprised me with the um with the craft film you can see just a smidge on here it's a little black but really not that much at all so that that was like i i was really pleased with that and i think that that's because it's a plastic now i also noticed that when i worked with felt so our next project after this one cuts is going to be a felt project so i have i used um the Cricut packet of felt, which is a synthetic felt. And I think that that is another reason why you don't have the lines on the actual felt piece itself, because I'm trying to see if I have a piece here that I cut from, um, because it has the, um, because it's a synthetic, so it, so it like burns it. I mean, it, it melts it. So when you're cutting wood, it burns it. So if you're cutting wood, you get like this black residue um, and it, it'll, it burns it. Um, but if you're cutting something plastic, like acrylic or like craft foam, it doesn't burn it, it melts it. So it melts through that. Um, good question, Joanne, why doesn't the Glowforge Aura cut white? So the Glowforge Aura doesn't cut white because of the, the, it's a diode, I hope I'm saying that right, it's a diode cutter, and it, it just doesn't have the force to be able to go through a white material. If you want to cut white and uh, clear acrylic, then you need to go with the Glowforge Pro, which is the one that will do that. Okay, so here is, now, and I know you guys are going to be like, oh, but Kesley, you wasted material. If I were doing this at home, like I mean, if I were doing this on my, you know, not for you guys, but if I were just doing this, um, I would make sure I was not wasting material. And um, I say that because this also has the plastic, the adhesive on the back. How cool is that? Um, I would have like, you know, I really would have made sure I took the time to get that positioned right in there properly. So it didn't waste. Now you could also add um, your heat transfer vinyl to craft foam if you wanted to, to make it shiny. Like you'd use um, glitter HTV, 
which believe it or not, your um, aura will cut your um, vinyl, your, your heat transfer vinyl. We're going to do some of that too. So, okay, so this material, I think this is our third one, is using craft foam. I don't think that goes that way. Get this going the right way. There you go. How fun. Now you could add a little charm on the top of this and hang it on the necklace. You could use it on the top of a clipboard. I thought how cute for like a teacher to do this on top of the clipboard. Um, just a lot of really fun places, unexpected uses for craft foam. Um, okay, so we're ready to move on to, and you can see where it did burn onto that pink paper, which that's fine. Um, are we ready to move on to felt? Now, the felt I used, I used Cricut's felt because it's a little bit stiffer felt than your average felt. So I really wanted to make sure I was using something that was a bit stiffer and would give me the results that I wanted uh, on the cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll cut this pink layer here so you can see how the felt cuts. Now, this is a synthetic felt, but you could use a natural felt like a wool um, or something like that would work. Um, can you say again why? Oh, I, you know what? I put the paper under the foam just because like if I close the Glowforge lid um, and I don't have material in there, all you see is the grid. So it's kind of, sometimes I find that difficult to design with. So I like to have um, a, like a, something in there so I have a flat surface to view my, my project with. So let me go, I'm gonna share my screen again here and we're gonna go into the Glowforge software again and I'm gonna show you, um, okay, so we're done with this one, so fun. Let's come up here. We'll go back to the create and I'm, I've already got my heart right here, my rainbow with love. So, okay, good question. Um, so yes, you don't want to use just any old um, heat transfer vinyl. That is 100% right. Your heat transfer vinyl, you need to use a special um, heat transfer vinyl, which is a plastic. So um, that is why Glowforge has its own um Let's see, sorry, I've got to, I can't talk and think at the same time here. Um, that is why Glowforge has its own setting for its own material, which is proof grade. Um, Caesar vinyl also has vinyl that is proof grade. Okay, so here's my, I'm just going to cut out this part of the design and I can move it. Now, if I wanted to, I could come back and move these magnets again so I saved my materials. And I don't have to worry about these other bits and pieces of this design that are um, lingering here because I don't have any settings for those to be cut. If I wanted to move them, I would have to ungroup these, these settings and then just move over the bits and pieces that I didn't wanna cut. But it's easier for me just to ignore those pieces and I'm just going to cut this one layer here. So again, I will use the um, set focus. And the, so I on the uh, Caesar website, it does have the settings for, uh, I mean, it does show on their packaging that you are using um, felt engraved. I want to do felt. Oh, I need to cut. Sorry. Now you can engrave on your felt as well. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that too. I'll show you some of that fun stuff. But really, I want to show you how to cut on it first, and then we'll talk about um, engraving on it. So, um, okay, so your felt, you can use different types of felt. I would 
uh, you know, practice around with your uh, cut setting. So you'll start with one cut setting maybe and then work your way around that. I feel like this is gonna be too far to the top here. I'm gonna slide this down just in case. Okay, and then we'll say print. All right, so once that goes, I will um, I'll print that. But I wanted to show you um, if you like, if you're, do again, if you're doing craft fairs or anything like that, you can um, take your a design and add that onto the felt and engrave that design. So this black design here, you can see it, it does come off a little bit when you first do it. Um, the black design is engraved onto this gray felt. So it doesn't cut through, it just burns the top of the felt. And again, I would practice play with different types of felt. Like I thought this was, this is the Cricut um, in their packet, the Cricut felt. And I chose that felt specifically because I know it's stiffer um, than, than your average felt. So I thought for the engraving and everything, that would be the perfect type of felt to select. And you just set the design on engrave. Now there's a feature in, the Glowforge app that you can add an offset to your design. So I brought in the black, the XOXO with the heart, and then I added the offset and I cut the offset and engraved the black. And then I did a second offset here and, and did that one. Now with something like this, you could add a little bit of um, uh, fragrance to this middle piece add a little essential oils or fragrance, run a string through it. You could sew it together if you wanted to. You could um, use glue and glue it together, glue this on the top of it, and now you have an air freshener for your car. The glue I would recommend using for something like this is um, this felt and foam glue. So all you have to do you just take your little design here. And I haven't I had this out last night, so I'm not sure if it, there we go. I was wondering if I left it out open, if it was still gonna be fresh for me today. I feel like it's not going to be, but hopefully you guys all know to just, you dab, 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 and you put that right on to your other felt piece like that. And then you just build out your pieces. When I cut this last uh, little piece here, I did it on, um, I put the, so it cut obviously like this. I put the blue tape, painter's tape, to hold all the pieces together on the felt. So when I uh, wanted to glue it down, I could just take my adhesive, put that on there, and then either use a light box to see where it needed to go or just take it one piece at a time. And sort of, this one's easy because it just goes right in the center there. But for these, you can even just peel it off this way and leave those little hearts down so you can see where they go. And then what I would do, I would double cheat on this, is I would put it over a light box so I could see where I needed to get or put it up against your window if you don't have a light box. So I could see where they, the hearts needed to go so that they stayed on the inside of the rainbow. See it? I mean, you can see that, right? You can see through to the red. So if you had it on a light box, it would help. You could turn it this way and dab, 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 and then just take your, this guy and put it that way. So whatever works for you. But when you have little pieces like this, it is handy to use the blue painter's tape to hold it all together. So if you want to, do you want to go to the front facing camera and I can, we can show them the felt coming out. So here's our felt. I've got my magnets down. Now with your, with wood, the magnets might not go through the wood material. 
So that's where you would um, make your own with acrylic, these little T's, these little guys here. If you can, this little guy, this goes into the hex and holds your material down. So this is what I was using first, but you can see like the material kind of slid a little bit. When I put that magnet on there, that material is not going anywhere. But with my wood, the little hex T's work. Okay, they're not super great, but they do work. All right, so there's our felt and it just pops right out. And you can make your design right there with that. Isn't that cute? Okay, now while I have my machine open, Let's talk a little bit about another material that you can cut, and that is leather. So these are little leather patches, and you can, you know, we'll talk about different types of leather, but I got these little leather patches. Um, I did not make them, and I bought them from Amazon, and I just used two little magnets on the side there. Now, the, um, let's see. Am I on my overhead? Okay, do you want to jump, jump back to the overhead for a second? I mean, you know what, before I move on to leather, let me make sure. Okay, so I, you know, you could like spray a little sealant. Somebody's asking, could I put a sealant over this to, um, to seal it? I just actually found um, on other ones when I just, brushed it with like a little cloth, it didn't come off on my fingers anymore. But you could definitely put like a little fabric sealer on there if you needed to. Okay, so these are my patches. And this was really fun to make. So I've got three different sort of depths of in engraving and they all use the same setting. So I didn't change the setting. But what changed was, this was the first one I did, and I tried it a couple different ways. Um, one with more pressure, one with less pressure, one with very little power. Um, the one with very little power almost feels sticky on the top. So it this one is the deeper one, and you can feel the groove in there. So that's the one I liked. Um, and then I was like, but it's really kind of thick. I think I would like to have something that maybe is a little bit lighter, a little bit daintier. So I did a lighter font. And then I tried just to see what the outline would look like. And that, that was really great. So I really like that. Um, so I can, why don't I get that started in the Glowforge? Um, and then you can, um, we can talk a little bit more about leather. So um, Laura's asking about the T. My T design, that little T design, I am, um, there's, a, there's a few Glowforge groups on um, Facebook. And I'm, I'm sure there's more than a few. Um, but one that I am, I've joined is, um, what's it, I can't remember what it's called. Rachel Timmerman is the one who sort of guides it. And she is, um, I can't think of what her website is right now, um, but she has a lot of helpful suggestions and that's where I got that from. Um, you can find me on Facebook at kesley.365 and I'd be happy to um, point you in her direction if you want to just shoot me a message there and I'll, I can point you to that group or if we have time before we finish, I will, I'll look that up for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna set my uh, focus here and then I'm going to select, um, I'll be engraving. So I'm gonna choose engrave and I just choose leather patch right there. So that will do my engraving for me. I'm not sure if this is too long, I won't do the um, engraving. So I'll see, let's see how long it takes. Um, I just, I'm not sure if this is a quick one or not. I just don't wanna take up too much of our time tonight just on one project. All right, and this one, I can't remember. I think this one, it engraved the whole thing, yeah. Okay, so let's see how long it would take to do this one. If it's just a few minutes, that's okay, because I have some other um, leather, leather to talk to you guys about.
All right, let's see. I can stop share here if you want to, do you want to go to the, um, okay, oh, there we go. Let's see how long it takes. The latest flashing, so it tells me it's ready to go. So four and a half minutes. Um, when I go ahead and start that and you, we can kind of see how that goes, maybe we'll get it done, maybe not. But while that's cutting, let's talk about a little bit other leather things. Now, these leather patches are specifically for laser. Um, so they are specifically designed for laser. Um, I looked for leather patches that are for laser engraving. They um, do have an adhesive on the back. So you could use like the Cricut hat press and put it on a hat. If you're putting it on like a little beanie, seemed a little bit big for me for a beanie, but um, Let's see how big they are. I think they're two inches by three inches. Yeah, they're like two inches by three inches, which seemed just a little tad big for a beanie, but each to each their own, right? Um, so just so you know, we all do make this all do like make errors. I was trying to engrave and um cut. This is a piece of natural leather. It's actually a repurposed um piece of leather from an old upholstery. Um, warehouse that I get little scraps of leather from. And so I just was trying it on there. I was kind of going off of the birthstone flower idea for a bookmark. And what I did is that it, this is just, I saved my little notes here. So I, you could see how I wrote down my settings until I got the right settings. Um, and then I grabbed, I remembered I had this metallic leather from Cricut. And I put a mask on one side and then no mask on the other side. And you can see the difference in the level of engraving between the two. Like this one didn't even get the flower engraved on there. And this one really, I think, did a great job with the flower. When I run my finger over Daisy's name, um, you can feel the name is engraved in there. So, um, on leather, I don't think you need to do the masking. I just was kind of trying it out, but I really love how how pretty this turned out um, out of the leather. But don't you've got to you've got to be willing to try and see how things go. So my first cut, I did a little circle, and then I did the second circle to see how it cut, how many passes I need, and and so so on. But I just you really have to be willing to go outside that box and try something new. So this is another, I just wanna show this one real quick here. Um, this is just a little canvas tote bag and I did engraving on that. And this design is in Glowforge. I didn't put anything on the inside of it, like to as a, as a barrier there. Um, so I just, it engraved right on there. So I, I really liked that, how that worked out. And then the last material is the heat transfer vinyl. Let me just check my questions here. Um, okay, so the bookmark question, would where my bookmark go? Um, would I put a backing on the bookmark? I don't know. I was I was I was asking myself that question. Um, I kind of like the the like the raw part of this um i don't think i would put anything on the back if i did i might put like iron on vinyl or something like that on the back of it um but i just think it's so it's it's just more natural um like this so i don't think i would put anything on the back i would probably cut some little leather strips to go off the top of that and, and put that on there on the leather um so, you know, Shelly's asking, how do I price my items? Shelly, I do not sell, um, I really don't sell my items. So I, I don't have, I don't have a good answer for you there, but I just think you have to go with what your market is demanding. Um, if your market is demanding that you, you know, what, what you can get for an item, and especially if it's a unique item, like I was thinking how cute would these be with your local zip code on it? at a craft fair or something like this, um, you know, for like the softball team, like go, like we're, we're the Madison Warhawks 
and it could be go Mads and Warhawks 2024 season. Like that's a, when you can make it unique, personal and customized, you can, you know, get a, a little bit more of a price on it. Oh, our patch is finished. Do you want to switch over to the front camera and you can see that? Oh, it's so cute. Sorry, I get to see it before you guys. All right. I'll bring this in closer. Look at how cute is that? So that just did that in what, two and a half minutes? These are the kind of things I think that are great for craft fairs. Um, one, because you can do it right at the craft fair. So you could actually put somebody's name on it right at the craft fair. If you have a generator or you have an outlet and you've got your filter, you can do that right there and make it with a custom name if you want. If you wanted to, that's always a good option. I love that. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about our heat transfer vinyl. Um, I'm going to put, I have a little piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the machine. Now, remember with heat transfer vinyl, you have uh, two sides. This shiny side is the carrier sheet. You want to put that down in the machine. So you're actually cutting on the back of the machine, on the back of the material. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into the machine with my little handy dandy magnets here, so easy. We'll close up the machine and in, I'm gonna share my screen again and show you the um, heat transfer vinyl settings. One more project. So somebody asked how you choose, how you price your custom um, cuts. When you go in to do something, like if you do a cut, down here you say manual and you put in your settings. And then when you say add, you could type in whatever your setting is and you just say save. So that next time, like there's my setting right there. So you'll remember what that is. And then if you, if you find like, oh, that wasn't the right setting, it didn't work, you can just trash that setting and delete it. Okay, so let's go, I'm gonna pull up my, I have one more little project here. Where did it go? Love you more. Now, for doing iron-on, you have to mirror your image. If you don't mirror your image, it will, it will not work. So when you're using iron-on materials, you have to mirror your image because you're cutting on the back side of the material. So I'm going to slide that in there. And I'll do the set focus. So Kathleen, yes, you can absolutely do um, stone engraving. I would start off with slate coasters and then gradually, you know, work work your way up if you want to do something a little bit a little bit deeper. Um, but I would start with uh, slate coasters is a great spot. I can use the, can, are you asking a question? Can you use the machine to cut the golden acrylic? Oh, like if I, I'm not sure which acrylic you're talking about. Um, if it is, uh, it just, I'm not sure who's, who's you're working with. So this is H, heat transfer vinyl glitter is my setting here. And we'll just go ahead and print that. Now with this particular um, material, I really did have to do a lot of practice cuts. So I did one, I did another one, I don't know what I did with it. Um, but since it's it heats up and this is a plastic, it's very easy to melt it. So my first couple of goes, I really wasn't happy because it was really, it was really melting. It didn't cut through, it did like a kiss cut, but it was melting. So I just sort of backed off on the power and I, I went back um, really low. So like when I pull this up, it like really pull, it doesn't really set very well. And I just kind of kept going one, one, one power up, one power up, one power up until I got a power that was weeding nicely and it, and it worked great. So all you have to do with this, so I cut it out of the back you see you cut it out of the back side so your image is mirrored and then you just put it on your blank in this instance it's a little bag and you just 
I would normally like wipe it down and make sure I have it clean. And when I'm using the um, Caesar vinyl, oh, I have a little, oh, here it is. Um, my setting is 350 for 10 to 15 seconds. So I have my little easy press over here that I've got heated up. We're gonna just do that really quick and you'll see that go on there. Um, what I wanna show you about Caesar though is not all of their vinyl is um, laser friendly. So if you go to their website and you look at like the glitter heat transfer vinyl, do you see this logo right here? And it says laser friendly. That means that that vinyl is okay to use in um, your laser cutter, whether it's a diode cutter or if it's um, the pro cutter. So I've got my design on here. Now you can do this. Um, I usually let's see if I can get that to go around the edge. You can do this with your home irons or the Cricut Easy Press. I like to use the Easy Press because it it gives me nice. Um, Nice pressure and everything. So we'll just do that for 15 seconds. Oh, I forgot. Okay. I just need to heat this up for five seconds. One, two, three, four. You always preheat your blank. Um, so that gets any moisture out of your blank. And then we're just gonna put our heat transfer vinyl down. 15 seconds, but you can do this with your home iron if you don't have an easy press. But if you're doing a lot of it, I would do the uh, easy press. Like if you're, you know, if you're doing craft fairs and things like that, I would definitely do an easy press and get lots of, lots of use out of it. So I just do the back real quick and then we just set this aside. So Nancy in, Nancy's asking, how do you mirror your image? In the Glowforge software, I think you have to have the, the paid version of the software. Um, hey, Kesley, I think you accidentally muted yourself. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, in the Glowforge software on the side here, this is where you can mirror your image, either switch it vertical or horizontal. And this is where you can add your offset if you wanted to add an offset. Now, when your machine is cutting, you can actually prep your next piece. So if I wanted to add an offset onto this design, I could do that right now um, while my machine is cutting. And so you see, I have a whole new layer that is the offset and the, the offset is like an outline around your shape. So I can just do that right here while your machine is going. So when I did that, um, my when I did this one, I kept, I would cut one piece and then pull in the next piece and cut one piece and pull in the next piece until I got that all filled up. All right, so I should have peeled this off already. Let's just do a little, I like to do a little corner to make sure that it is gonna peel up nicely and look at that. So you can see all my, my letters stayed on my design, little pieces, little scraps here, but all my letters stayed on that carrier sheet. And I was able just to transfer those right onto my little, um, my little cosmetic pouch there. And let me grab this piece, you guys can see, and this will be the last thing we get to show you. Um, but there's my cut. And so once you've done the cut and I can feel it on this side, it is all, um, it's all, you know, it's all one piece. And then I'm just gonna use this weeding tool. First, I take out the little middle pieces and I kind of remove anything on the side. Now I do like to do this right out of the glow forge when it's kind of warm. 
um, because I find the plastic is a little bit more, the glitter vinyl is a little bit more malleable. So it comes up a little bit easier if I do it right after, right out of the glow forge versus waiting, especially when you're working with little areas like this, it's good to get in there and just get that right out. So I, I think this is something I still need to work on. I'm not super happy, like I, I'm happy with it. It's great. If I had, you know, um, a late a digital cutter, I would probably continue to use that. But I think that that's my on my on my end, <laughs> my user end, not the material end. I just don't know exactly the settings. So um, you know, you may want to practice around with the Glowforge proof grade iron on material first, and then branch out and try other, you know laser approved materials, you do want to make sure that you are using um, vinyl that is safe to go in the glow forge. Number one for safety, you don't want to, you know, put chemicals into your environment that are not healthy for you. So you want to make sure that, and then also you don't want to start a fire. Um, the glow forge is great because uh, it is kind of contained and I have not started a fire yet at all. Um, so we're good there, but it, it is, it is a little, it does make I me, mean, it did make me nervous when I first started and you kind of get this little warning that says like, that's not approved material. That's not so safe. And then I, I think to myself, well, maybe I shouldn't cut it. But then I, I kind of got over that hump and I just feel like I, I'm going to try and cut everything and engrave anything. But if it's walking around, like, I think how cute would it be to take this on a pair of jeans put the pair of jeans through the side door and um, and engrave the pocket of a pair of jeans. Like that just to me, oops, there we go. I had to shut my camera off again. That just to me seems like it would be so cute. All right, let me switch back over here. Um, so, um, so if you're trying to cut a material like an acrylic material or something like that, Usually the websites that you purchase that material from will give you cut settings. The Glowforge Aura is still so new that it's building up its cut settings. So like all the materials that I cut today do, don't have um, specific cut settings in the Glowforge. I had to make my own settings. So you just kind of have to be willing to take that little piece of Take your little piece of iron-on material, do a bunch of different cuts and figure out exactly what is the right cut. I think I still need to practice with this one, um, but I, I'm loving it. Like it's so easy and it, it goes so quickly. The ability to engrave, I just, that is like, that kind of is a game changer for me. I'm a sewer, so I love that on um, little tags and things. It's so cute. All right, well, I think we have come up on our time. Ooh, that was a lot. If you have questions, you can always reach out to me. I am on Instagram at kesley.365 as well as Facebook at kesley.365. And, um, oh, let me grab, before we head out, let me just grab my phone, which is where I have my Facebook thing. Hold on, sorry. Oh, I can't get it out of my container. Okay, um, let me just grab this and... I can tell you the name of the of the Glowforge group, but you can just do a search on um, on Facebook and you'll find it. It's Glowforge Aura Crafters by the Analytical Mommy, and she has a whole list of settings. It is a fantastic group. Everyone is so friendly. Um, that's actually where I got the foam idea from. That. Somebody did that and shared it. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I got to try that. And now I get to share it with you guys. So there's lots of resources out there for you um, with information. Michaels is really trying to help educate you if you've got a machine on what you can do with it and how to use it. So, you know, let in your, at the end of the meeting, when you do your survey, let Michaels know what classes you're interested in. If you make something, share it on Instagram and tag learn with Michaels and, or tag me, kesley.365. We would love to see what you create. Thanks everyone. I hope you have a good evening.